the good old 25 marker, right? In Econ 3 and Econ 4, you're going to have two of these per paper. So you've got to make sure that you can do them really well. They are very, very important questions for you all. The best advice I can give you as a teacher and as a former student is to keep things simple with these questions. Don't overthink them and don't get into a tiz in your mind about how to structure them. I would say keep your mind simple, keep this basic structure in mind and it will steer you in the right direction a lot of the time. So this is my general structure for 25 mark questions, whether it's Econ 3, whether it's Econ 4. This structure tends to work for most questions that come up. Let me go through it and then I'll go through a couple of exceptions down below. Start your 25 markers with definitions and a brief introduction. Definitions given the key terms in the question and any other key terms that you think are really, really significant are underpinning your essay. So don't overdo that, just one or two key terms you think underpin your essay, but certainly the key terms in the question. And a brief introduction to show the examiner you understand what the question is asking, what the core issue uh, behind the question actually is. So a brief intro, we're looking at two, three lines maximum. It's in the mark schemes, examiners like it when you do it, so do it, but keep it brief. Then, don't waste any time. Straight away, what are you trying to do on these 25 markers? You are trying to form an argument. It's a discuss or evaluate based question. It requires you to make an argument. And when you make an argument, you need to give two sides, don't you? No argument is complete without two sides. That's what your job is on a 25 marker. Simple as that. So, you would then say, on the one hand, here's the argument on one side. That's what you do. So, answer the question on the one hand. And within that, the number of points you make on the one hand is dependent on the question. Um, but if it's just you discussing one thing, you may be looking at making two points on the one hand. And within those two points you make, two solid paragraphs maybe, depth of analysis, 100%, the same kind of change that you did in your 15 marker or your 10 marker before, you need to be doing again. So depth of analysis, 100%. Would you include a diagram? Absolutely. If that's relevant for your answer, absolutely. If it helps answer the question, go for it. Make sure it's fully labelled, it's detailed, and crucially, you refer to it in your writing. Otherwise, it's pointless. So depth of analysis, really important. Apply. Every time you're writing a paragraph, you're making a point, apply. Use the extracts to help you. So much material in those extracts to help you with application, my goodness. But also, if you've got your own knowledge, use it. Maybe in global, in the unit four, in global context, you've got your own knowledge of how economies are. If the question is UK-based, you might have your own knowledge of how the UK economy is doing. All right? So bear that in mind. And evaluate throughout. So every time you make your points, look to evaluate. Watch my separate video on evaluation. The link is just above my head. Watch that because evaluation is a very important concept. It deserves its own video. I don't want to ramble too much in this video. So click on that for you to really understand what evaluation is all about and how to do it effectively. AQA examiners want you to evaluate throughout your response. That's how you get into level five, the top band. If you don't evaluate throughout, if you do it all right towards the end, you leave it all for your judgment, you're not going to score that top level five. So evaluate throughout, watch my video to see what I mean by evaluation and how to do it. So you do that on the one hand. Like I said, the number of points you make depends on the question, depends on your plan. But that's basically what you do there. Then you look at the other side of the argument. You say, right, on the other hand, What's the other side of this argument? And you make your points on the other hand. The points you make, remember, you analyze them in depth, chains, just like you did before, right? That's got to be consistent throughout your essay. Again, if diagrams are relevant here, then draw a diagram, refer to it, fully label it, make sure it's detailed, and yeah, that will score, absolutely. Apply as before and evaluate as before. Very important that you do that. So I keep talking about writing these really nice paragraphs. How do you do that? Well, again, I made a video. How to write good paragraphs in economics essays when it comes to questions like these, discuss related questions like these are. Watch that video again, because I don't want to ramble too much. I made a separate video. That will make it clear <clears throat> how to actually write in detail. So the examiner, when reading your paragraph, is going to have a massive smile 
on their face and is going to reward you significantly. Okay? So, you've done your intro with definitions, you've done your two-sided argument nicely, evaluating throughout, applying throughout, chains of analysis throughout, diagrammed, intermittent, lovely. The last thing you then need to do is to make a judgment. Judgment is really important. It's going to separate the average economist to the best. The difference between your A and B and your A star, for sure, lies in your judgment. And that needs to be done seriously well. Again, I made a separate video on how to write a good judgment because it's so important. I don't want this video to be too long. So watch that video again, how to make and write a solid judgment, which is going to get you close to 25, if not 25 marks. Really important to round off your essay with a good judgment. I'd recommend leaving at least five minutes to do that judgment. It needs to be, you know, obviously you don't focus on quantity, but a good judgment is going to be at least a half a page to three quarters of a page long. That's what we're looking for in a judgment. Seriously good one. That's going to work, guys. This structure is going to work for almost every question, um, 25 mark question that can be thrown at you. You need to kind of just think about it and apply your plan to this kind of structure. It will work, trust me. That's what I did when I was doing this myself as a student. That's what I promote now to my students that I teach. This works almost all the time. Where you need to think a little bit deeper is if you get questions which require you to discuss two policies or a range of policies, or two things or a range of things. Normally it's policies here. And if that comes up, then this still works. This still works. But when you finish your, on the other hand, for your first policy, you then bring in your next policy to overcome the limitation of the first. That's how you bring it in. All right, so here's my second policy. Let me go through detailed chains of analysis specifically though in overcoming the limitation of the first policy and still answering the question then you do a limitation to that policy if you need to do another policy you do you do that a third time so then here's my third policy which can overcome this specific limitation of my second policy you do that in detail then uh, here's a limitation of that third policy in detail then you come to your judgment so if you have a range of policies you're looking at a paragraph for each policy on the one hand and a paragraph for the limitation of each policy on the other hand. Right? That's what we're looking for there. Then you come to your judgment. Obviously, if you're discussing one thing or one policy, instead of limiting yourself to kind of like one paragraph or one point on the one hand, if you want to show a bit more range, then you're looking at maybe two points on the one hand, two points on the other hand. That's all time dependent, guys, and it's all dependent on the question, so just bear that in mind. All right? So, yeah, that covers 25 markers. So important, though, that you practice. AQA, it's tricky, these 25 markers, because they are such a range of 25 markers. So the best way for you to get into these and to make sure you can smash them in the exam is to practice loads of different types of 25 markers. Loads of different types. You don't need to write them all out. You just need to plan them, basically. Write a plan, apply to a structure, and if you can do that confidently, then you know, come the exam time, you're going to be absolutely fine. That's the way to safeguard yourself with AQA 25 markers. They are so broad, you've got to make sure you practice them and write plans. That's the way. All right, so hopefully this video helped. Um, bear in mind I've got my own experience as a student with these and as a teacher. So I'm trying to put myself into your shoes. This is the best that you can do and this will really help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.